Hello folks, welcome to the workshop on a Sunday evening. Tonight we're going to do a little maintenance to our crossbow here. It's an Excalibur Micro 360 takedown. It's hunted one season so it really doesn't need very much but I'm kind of a details guy and if I look after the little things now it'll be in fine shape for the upcoming turkey season. First off let's look at this string together. If we look at these two star string silencers we can see a little wear and tear from a season of hunting. Well, I was worried because this one here is actually missing one of the legs and I didn't want the string to be out of balance. So I contacted Excalibur and they told me that they're not available as a replacement part independent of the silencing kit. And they suggested I just remove them. So I'm going to remove the string and uh, remove these two silencers before I put it back on. Also, if we look here, there's supposed to be a one eighth of an inch to one half of an inch gap between the string and the reds here. As you can see, there isn't any gap, and that's really not a problem. All it means is that through the normal wear and tear, the string is stretched a little bit. So I'm going to put a few twists in that string, like Excalibur recommends when I take it off, so I can set the brace height. From here to here is supposed to be an inch and a half to two inches, which will give us one eighth to one half of an inch gap here. No big deal. Let's take the bow down now, and let's put on the Excalibur stringing aid, and uh, let's take this string off. That works slick. Couldn't get much easier than that, that's for sure. Now let's take a look at removing these stars. There's the other gun. I removed the two string silencer stars. I've waxed the string. Let's put it back on and we'll set this brace height down. That looks perfect. Let's put it up on the stand and take a look at it. Well, that adjustment worked well. We're supposed to have a brace height that's a measurement between the string and this line here of anywhere between an inch and a half to two inches. And right now, as you can see, we're about an inch and 15 sixteenths. And the distance between the string and the reds here are supposed to be anywhere from one eighth to one half. And we're running just a little over five sixteenths. So it gives us a little bit of room to, as we shoot the bow, for the string to stretch and still stay well within the manufacturer's limits. Now we've got the brace height set. Let's spin this around. And we're going to check and make sure all the fasteners are tight. And then I'm going to check the alignment of the scope. There, they're all good. Now let's get things sitting level and check the alignment of the scope. Now, I've already adjusted the eye relief to what I find comfortable for me. We're just going to get this nice and level before we do anything else. And that's not bad either. Now let's see what a scope is. This little level is something my father gave me, and my father's father gave it to him when he was an apprentice machinist a long time ago during the war in England. And it's out a little bit. So the crossbow is sitting in a gun vise here. The limbs are level, the rail is level, but as you can see the scope is not. And at 20, 30 or 40 yards I'm sure it wouldn't make very much difference. But I hope to be able to shoot this crossbow 60, 70 yards. And the last thing I want is my elevation and windage adjustments diverging. So we're going to loosen up those mounts and we're going to give that scope a twist and make it nice and level and parallel to the rail and parallel to the limbs. Now that everything's level, all that remains is to tighten up the caps on these rings. And I'm going to do it in an X or a cross pattern to make sure I don't put any torque on the tube of the scope and pull it out of alignment. And I'm going to try and keep the gaps on the rings the same from side to side. Well folks, that's it. The limbs are level, the rail's level, and the scope is level. The rings are snug, all the fasteners are snug. All that's left now is to lubricate the trigger assembly and a couple of other moving parts. But I think it's time for me to head on in the house and call it a night. 
We hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you again on Out of the House with Paul.